Time for masking. And there is a lot of masking to be done on this kit. So I've got the paint guide here and it's a little bit all over the place. It's a little bit musical chairs because some of the lines they're showing aren't actually etched into the kit uh, for panel lines. So I've sort of taken a bit of creative license with some of them. But start off I've got the cockpit here and so you can see that I painted the red over the grey primer and I will just mask off all the areas that need to remain red and of course for this particular section we painted in the uh, the off-white so there's a little red um, little red dome on the backpack that um, I masked off and the two stripes for the um, heads they both need a stripe on them so it is asymmetric it's slightly on the um, on the right there from center that you can see and so it's just a strip of Tamiya tape that's sort of cut to size and runs all the way down both the heads now for the extra components that go on the heads the side uh, cannons or aerials whatever they are I've actually just used some uh, Mr. Masking solution. So it's like a latex thing that you paint on and it works as a, as a mask. So we'll see how well that, uh, that works out once I actually paint white over those. Now the legs, I actually painted uh, the red and also the metallic for the front part of the foot. So I've masked that off. You notice I've used Tamiya tape and I've also used some of the masking solution. The reason I do that is I find that Tamiya masking tape, especially here at the moment, it's quite warm. It'll actually lift. So I use that to sort of seal all the joints and I just find it helps to, to keep the tape down. According to the instructions on the, um, let's see, on the front side, yeah, there's supposed to be a stripe goes across the front, but I've decided not to worry with that because it basically needs to line up with this stripe you can self mast off and it's not really going to look that great. So I've decided to leave that one off. There's actually a red stripe that goes on the other side with the other piece. Um, this piece that connects to it. So you can see I've masked off that red stripe and also part of the, the small wing there. Now the arms, there are a couple of uh, panel lines in there. So I've got sort of the stripe, little triangle. Down the um, middle of the forearm though, there's no sort of panel line there. So I've just sort of cut some tape to the right width and run it down the middle on both sides of the forearm. These shoulder pieces, they're obviously blue at the moment, but I masked it off. This is going to be white, and it also has like a little red uh, marking on it as well. So uh, I've masked that off ready for the, actually I'll probably paint the red and then mask that off and then do the white around it. This is the white cockpit. So I've painted black around the edges and masked all that off. So that's ready for the white to go on the canopy. Now the wings are, one of the wings is a little bit of a doozy. So what I've done here is masked off all the red, but you can see the UN Spacey logo there that I've tried to mask off. I'm hoping it works. Um, it may need a little bit of touch up by hand after I've done it. We'll see how it goes. But the other great thing about this kit is because it's got those sort of panel lines around the logo um, I might be able to disguise some of the rough edges by putting a panel liner in there. For the forearm armor um, there's like a front red section and also the missiles are uh, painted metallic so I think I'll end up doing the missiles just painting them by hand and so I've just masked off this area that I can that I can paint red. For the front armor, the top piece here is going to be red. The little circle there is going to be red. This middle piece is actually going to be white. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to paint all the uh, the red first, 
and then I can mask all the red off and just um, do that middle part white. Again, just use that masking solution, the latex stuff, to sort of seal up all the uh, masking tape so it doesn't start lifting on me. Now for the backpack pieces, um, I've masked this off. I'm actually going to put some metallic paint in there. It's hardly going to be seen, but you know, it's just a little bit of detail. So I've just literally masked around the, uh, the top edges and just a bit of paper towel around to protect the rest. So I've got to mask this one up the same. And I thought I would quickly show you how I go through the masking process. There's, um, this one's going to be pretty straightforward, but um, I think it's probably worth just showing you how I actually do it. So I use uh, Tamiya masking tape, which of course comes in different widths. So I'm going to use the thick stuff for this particular demonstration. And because this has, you know, quite um, deep panel lines, I'm actually going to use them to my advantage. So I'm literally going to just tape over the whole lot. I'm just going to loosely place it over. And then I'm going to take a, a toothpick and I'm just going to burnish it down where that panel line is. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that panel line as a guide for running running the knife along. Now of course there will be some panel line wash going in here so if it's not perfect we'll still be able to hide a bit of it. You just want to burnish that down as much as possible and then burnish down the edge that you're masking so in this case it's the the blues on this side, the reds on that side. So I'm just going to burnish this down. Just make sure that it's, because that's where you tend to get paint bleed under, is where you haven't sort of burnished down the tape properly. And uh, although my experience with the lacquer acrylics is uh, they dry so quick, they don't really have that much of a chance to uh, to bleed under, which is good. All right, and then you need a brand new blade in your um, craft knife. And you literally just follow the guide. And then that way you can take some tweezers and just gently pull away at the area that's uh, you want to reveal you just pull it back on itself and if you see there's a bit that you missed especially in the corners you know you can go back in there with a with a knife but that looks pretty good yeah so here maybe you can just sort of see it start it's not coming back properly so there's obviously Go back in there with a knife. Okay, so there's a little bit of a rough spot in there, and what you can do in this case is just literally get a toothpick and sort of just push it, push it back into the. Uh, panel on. You can see there's a thin slither tape there. I have to just go back in with the knife I think. So you can use a combination of your knife and a toothpick. Make sure you burnish all that down again. I can see I've made a real mess of this one. All right, so once you're done, you can go back and just burnish it down again with a toothpick just to make sure that the uh, the edge of the tape is sitting in there nice. So I'll just tape up the, uh, the rest of it 
um, won't worry about the back so much but um, just tape up the uh, this back bit so we don't get any red here but that's that's pretty much it I just use the panel lines as a guide um, some people lay down you know scribing tape and all that sort of thing but if the uh, if the panel lines are sort of you know defined well enough they're pretty good guides to use now the other thing that I wanted to show you was for these particular leg armor pieces because this is going to be um, a little bit problematic in the fact that if we have a look at the um, painting guide we have these two little white um, shapes in here that go over the blue so what I need to do is mask those out but I want them to be the same on both sides so what I'm going to do is take a piece of the larger tape and lay it down on my cutting mat. All right, and then I'm going to take a piece that's shorter. This will make sense in a minute as to why it's shorter, but basically I'm going to lay it directly on top so it's in, in line. I'm going to get as close as possible. Okay, so I've now got the two layers of tape there. And now it's a matter of measuring up the, um, the panels where this uh, shape needs to go onto. And if I remember rightly, I think it was uh, 12 mil. Yeah. Okay, so I know I've got to do 12 mil width. So what I'll do is I'll start by cutting just one side and this will be the, uh, the reference side. So I'll use this corner to sort of line things up. Okay, and then we'll measure out 12 mil on both sides and draw a line. Now all we're doing here is just setting it up so that we know how to position the mask that we're creating. Okay. Um, so I know that if I line up this corner with the corner of this piece, then I can get it basically aligned on both sides. So then I'm going to draw a thin line at the top. This is going to be the top of the shape. It comes pretty close to the, um, if we have a look, it comes pretty close to the top of the blue. So now it's a matter of finding the center. And I'm just sort of eyeballing a bit of this stuff, but you can measure it out and I haven't really got the best best pencil for this neither. And then we want to sort of make some measurements so that we can get a shape that is right. And I'm just going to cut this out. more obvious when I actually pull the center piece out. It ain't perfect, but it's pretty close. So the next thing I'm going to do is of course, now I have um, like a registration point, if you like, this corner. I have the shape, but because I put two layers of tape down, it means I've created identical masks. So that way when you see the two legs together, because they are going to be close together, um, it's not going to look so, uh, so strange. So now I can pull up the first, the first piece. 
very carefully because of that thin thin line. Is just line it up. Now I may have to put a little bit of tape over the top here but because that's lined up in that corner there I reckon that's going to be pretty good. That one's not straight because I've uh, <laughs> sanded it down it was just the nature of the mold it was sort of uh, a bit problematic but that's all right it is what it is. So then I can take this other one and do the same thing. And because the, the mass and the registration should be, if not the same, very similar. Of course, with all masks, you don't know how well it sort of works until you, uh, <laughs> until it's too late and you pull it all off. But anyway, all right. So I'll go ahead and mask the rest of it, but at least now we'll have two, you know, identical sort of masks across the two things. So don't be afraid to sort of layer up pieces of tape if you're cutting out shapes and that sort of thing. It just can assist you in making uh, multiple masks, especially if they're sort of small shapes like uh, like this case. So the next step is for me to go ahead and start painting. Um, I'll give you an update when I've got you know the painting sort of uh, completed, and so we'll be able to see the result of the masking to see if it all worked. Okay, I have done a lot of the painting, and first I just have to apologise for the. Corellas you can probably hear in the background. They're an Australian native native bird and uh, a large uh, parrot and they make a hell of a racket, especially when they get together with cockatoos. So that aside, I'm going to show you some of the progress that I've done. So some of these pieces I've already taken the masking off and you can see the, uh, the red and the Boeing uh, grey, I believe it's called, or growing Boeing white. Um, now you can see a bit of a rough edge there on the stripe, but um, that rough edge is actually sort of within the panel line. So once I get sort of some um, Tamiya panel liner in there, it'll be fine. So this is the canopy with the white and the black surround. And then for the other canopy, at the moment it's all painted in jet black gloss. And I think what I'll do is I'll mask off the canopy and then just do a matte coat on the frame around the canopy. So hopefully that will, um, you know, there'll be enough of a difference there. The wings, uh, this particular one, pretty straightforward, just the one striped in the middle. I actually really like the colour combination. It's not, you know, stark white and it's not a super bright red. So I'm pretty happy with uh, the colour choice. Bit of a fluke, really. I didn't uh, expect it to be that good. Uh, let's see. One of the arms. So I masked the little triangle, little stripes down the sides of the forearm. So pretty happy with that. There are some pieces that I'm going to have to do touch up on. So this, uh, the cockpit, you know, this part worked all right with the uh, the red, but on the backpack, the little red dome, you can see it's a little bit rough. So it's going to need just a little bit of a touch up with uh, with a paintbrush. So I'll get a paintbrush in there and, and touch that up. The other thing that I will have to do on this is there's actually small UN Spacey logos on the side here and I'm just going to hand paint them in. I don't think there's any other way I can sort of really do that without decals. So that's the cockpit. 
both of the heads have the stripes on them um, they're going to have a like a, I'm going to use a clear green in the eyepieces but I'm going to do that after I've matte coated everything um, because I want to do something where I put a bit of um, a bit of gloss over that for all the antennas I've just still got the masking on but um, that's basically um, just metal underneath Uh, it's come up uh, it's come up pretty well and I've done that for all the pieces on on both the heads so that's just a gun metal that I've used for the metal uh, for the leg armor pieces um, so if we have a look on the instructions you can see they've got these sort of little white um, cutouts or I guess or shapes on them so what I've done is I've just masked them off and I'm hoping it's come up okay oh yeah that hasn't come up too bad it's a little bit rough but I think it'll do probably not as big as what it's showing on the instructions but um, I don't know that that actually doesn't bother me that much I think that'll be fine for the the wheels uh, the undercarriage um, I painted them in gum metal and I'll just brush paint the tires I think that'll be easier and also with the the armor on the forearms I've painted you know masked off for the red but these uh, little missile launchers or weapons whatever they are I'm going to hand paint them, I think, with a, probably with the Vallejo um, metallic gun metal. I haven't unwrapped these guys yet, neither. So these are the uh, pieces that go on the backpack. And so they're predominantly blue, except for sort of an area that's like a vent or an exhaust. Um, and I've done that in gun metal. I can see straight away it's going to need a bit of a touch up so just a little bit of blue on that left hand edge there it's a bit hard to see on camera but um, the rest of it's come up all right so just a bit of a touch up needed there and also for the legs this has actually got multiple had multiple masking done on it the last bit I did was, oops, that's the wrong way. For the last one I did, so for the legs, the last bit of painting I did was uh, the gun metal, but I've actually done a few other bits and pieces on this as well. So hopefully we unwrap it, it should look okay. So if the sound of the birds is coming across, uh, that's the sound of summer for me every summer. That's what we get every night So they are funny birds um, And they are a protected species But uh, they can be noisy at dawn and dusk Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that a bit of metallic in there there's um, the stripe here again the edges on the stripes look a little bit rough but once there's a panel line you know get a panel line enamel in there it'll be fine and of course mast off the uh, the front part of the foot as well so that's all ready to go which is good and the final bits of masking are more armor pieces so this is the um, the armor pieces that go on the shoulders and this is a combination of red, um, blue, and the white. So I actually painted the blue first and then masked off the area where the white was going to go and actually sprayed red and then masked off um, this tiny little piece here so I could paint white over the top of it. So I actually went from here yeah, to blue first, then red, then white. 
And I find when you're using paints that are really opaque, that's a, um, a really good way to go. Probably a little bit of a touch up around the edges there. Um, nothing severe and of course no paints lifting which is good. And I'm going to try and lift this off. Without scratching the paint. There we go. Alright, so we have the red there. And for masking off that, that red shape, I actually used the same process I did in the previous video where I laid down a piece of tape over another piece of tape and cut out the shape. So they were both exactly the same for, um, uh, for both bits of armor. Now the chest armor, um, again, this was a multi-color, you know, it had blue, red, and then white. So I haven't unwrapped this yet, so I'm keen to see how it actually went. And I suspect this will probably need some touch up around the edges as well. So some of it I will actually need to go in with a brush and touch it up, but others will probably be okay because they will be covered once I put a panel line in there. There you can see the, the red. And the final lot of masking is the blue. Now one thing to be aware of with this kit, if you're not intending on painting it, uh, using you know the, the stickers that come with it as sort of reference for particular areas, the stickers will not give you the full um, color. Like um, for the, uh, you know, for all the different stripes and elements. So just be aware of that. I think if you just use the stickers, might end up looking a little bit, um, a little bit plain, maybe. So just be aware of that. But I mean, you can use gunner markers, or you know, there's plenty of, plenty of options out there. The other thing too that you might be interested in is I keep a log of the number of hours I spend on kits. I don't do uh, commissions or anything like that, but um, just as a matter of interest for myself, I'm always interested in how long it takes you know, to actually do a particular model or whatever. And what amazes me on this one is I'm already up to sort of, you know, nearly 30 hours on it and it's such a small kit, but I think a lot of that time is all the prep work I did on the pieces. You know, there was a lot of sort of gap filling and sanding. Um, and then the masking. The masking was, you know, you do all this masking and you're literally on the airbrush for, you know, for a minute and a half. <clears throat> all right, but this is uh, pretty good. All right, so there's the red the white part and the red dot and just to sort of show you on the instructions you know you got the red dot you got the white and the red there's also a metallic bit I might just do that by hand and of course the the number one there which uh, I'm going to do with the decal so that's pretty much uh, you know where I'm up to with the um, painting at the moment the next step for me is to obviously go through, brush paint, clean up all the areas that need need fixing, and then it'll be a matter of sort of putting down a gloss coat and do the panel lining. So, see you soon. Before I go through doing a gloss varnish on these pieces, I want to put together the, the legs, more specifically these pieces that go as part of the, the foot assembly. So I think I mentioned in a previous video that I use uh, metal pins to go through so that way I could you know, join these two halves together and deal with the seam lines. So what I'm going to do is basically put this in position and get this pin and try to uh, get it through the hole. Now there's a little bit of paint in there now in the hole so I just want to 
going to muscle that out a little bit. There we go. So doesn't matter if it's a bit tight because you want the you want the um, the toe piece or foot piece to be you know rigid when it's for posing. So now it's sort of a matter of finding the uh, the hole on the foot, pushing it through, and as you can see, it pushes all the way through. And there the uh, foot piece now moves and it's reasonably rigid. It's enough to hold it in place. Um, if it, um, if I find it's getting uh, too loose in there, then I may be able to, um, I may be able to sort of stiffen it up a little bit. I don't know, by putting a little bit of super glue in there or something, I'm not sure. It looks like to me that it might be able to go in just a little bit more. So I need an edge. Let's paper the towel down and we're just going to try and wish this pin in. There we go. Now it's nice and flush. Because I did actually measure it. So it should, uh, and that's actually tightened it up really well. So now the uh, Foot stands like that and as you can see there's nothing visible on the other side and this will be covered up by another piece over the top so that way I have been able to um, deal with the seam line on the leg and still actually have the toe piece movable because of course when it's in fighter mode it's folded back like that and when it's in batroid mode or gear walk mode it comes forward so that's just to show you that um, assembly so you can see how that works. Now the instructions call out for a green colour for the eyepiece. And what I want to do is give it a look of green glass. So I'm going to be using this um, Ammo by MIG um, Clear Crystal Periscope Green, a MIG 096. And I'm going to use this to sort of give it a bit of a, yeah, like a glassy look. And this will be a bit of an experiment to see how it goes. I may have to, um, actually I might start the small one first. So it'll be interesting to see how this goes, see whether it works or not. Um, so I'm just going to use my dodgy palette here. brush is wet just wipe off all the excess and what I'm going to do is try and get quite a bit loaded up in the brush and literally just drop it in there and so what I wanted to do is I want it to fill that space There's a bit of surface tension in there. You can sort of see that it gives a bit of variation in there. Now, of course, I've already matte coated this. Um, this is already sort of complete. It looks like a, a bit of a bubble in there or something. There we go, that's a bit better. So see how it's sort of dark around the edges. And I hope it sort of retains that that gloss look. So that's the the small um, the small head, and I think that's probably going to be the easiest one. I think this big one is going to be a bit more problematic just to get the uh, just to get the clear sort of smooth in there. So I want to get a nice sort of coverage. In that recess, and then I can worry about sort of uh, building up layers in there. Yeah. So 
So what you want to do is pull a little bit just at all the edges. And just letting gravity do its thing. Uh, a bit rough. I'll try putting a little bit more in there, see if we can put it up a bit more darker green in the uh, in the recesses there. Yeah, I've got no idea how this is going to dry. It might, uh, so I think I'm going to have to keep it nice and flat so that it. Uh, where it's supposed to because at the moment it's sort of running all over the place. Oh, there's a little bowl in there. Alright, so I think I might leave that flat and put something over it just so that it doesn't uh, get dust in it and let that dry and um, I think that'll be the last of the uh, detail painting I do for the main body part. Um, I have redone the canopy for the, uh, this is for the fighter mode and the girl walk mode. And I've had all sorts of problems with this because I did a silly thing. I experimented with painting a couple of different techniques. Wasn't happy with it. Thought, oh yeah, I'll just brush a bit of lacquer uh, like a thinner on there to um, take off the paint and it started to melt the plastic so it made a horrible mess took a lot of putty and clean up to get it back to a semblance of what it was it's far from perfect but um, what I've decided to do is I've just gone with uh, the black primer I'll mask off all the edges and then the glass bits I will um, just paint in sort of a, a metallic color to give the appearance of a um, of a canopy glass so I've had all sorts of dramas with that one, but hopefully I should get that sorted uh, pretty quick. So the Periscope Green has dried, and you can see how it's sort of dark around the edges. Um, there's a little bit of, you can see a little bit of the seam in there, but um, that's all right. Uh, the smaller one probably came up a bit better. You can see how it's definitely darker green around the edges, so it kind of really gives that impression of glass. The problem is, is that it sort of dries, um, there's a little bit of a shine to it, but it's, you know, I want it to look ultra glossy. So what I'm going to use is um, this stuff, the Testers uh, Clear Parts Mint Window Maker. I love this stuff, it's great. And so I'm literally going to, start with the big one first, I'm literally going to put dabs in here. Make sure I might test it's coming out of the bottle properly first. Yeah. So this stuff is like uh, PVA, only a lot thinner. What I want to do is pull it in there and then I might use a toothpick. Is there. Yeah, even though it's sort of milky at the moment, it will dry crystal clear. beautiful and clear now what I've got is a uh, just a plastic cup and I'll put that to the side and put the plastic cup over it so it doesn't collect any dust while that's drying okay the other the other thing that I've done is I've done the canopy 
So I have uh, masked off the canopy edges and I just made that up because I'd lost all the detail when I stupidly put um, lacquer thinner over it and started to melt the plastic. You can see there's a little bit of a, a um, divot in there that I missed in the sanding. So this is not a true representation of what the piece looks like when you get it out of the kit as far as its shape goes and I know it's actually probably not gonna not gonna fit particularly well on the kit now. Um, but I mean I was lucky that I didn't lose the piece altogether. Now you can see around the edges I used uh, different different tape. This is uh, uh, Nido tape, I think, um, and it's it's used specifically for doing canopies and stuff because it's really quite stretchy and you can get around curves really well. So we'll see how well this went. gloss definitely bounces off the uh, the black edge there that's good there is a little bit of a uh, stepped edge um, I'm going to have to do just a little bit of touch up there on that uh, on that corner, but um, yeah, a bit of stepped edge. I'm not sure how I'm going to deal with that. I don't think I will. I think I'll just leave it as is, and I should have learnt my lesson the first time with this particular thing. But um, that's going to uh, that's going to look reasonable, I guess. Because yeah, when I first did it, I experimented with spraying um, uh, clear green over the top of the silver, and it just didn't uh, didn't stick. It just sort of pulled and uh, made a mess. So, all right. So the next step is uh, wait for the eyes on the helmets or on the heads to dry, and touch this up, and then I think we're ready for assembly. Time for final assembly. I've got everything painted except the gun. And I don't think I have the gun painted for um, the assembly because I'm all sort of ready to go. So I'm going to do this um, after I sort of finish this up. Um, I've only literally just got the spring today. So that's why I haven't sort of painted the gun with everything else. But the spring is uh, 10 millimeters long and it's got an out, um, outer diameter of about 2 millimeters. And that fits onto this post, the mechanism. And you can sort of see that little barb that catches the, uh, catches the, the bullet or the projectile. Um, it, it's gonna work better if it's actually sort of, if, if the spring sort of finishes before that, uh, that barb there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this together and just show you how well it actually works. And I think I can kind of see why they decided not to repop this kit with a spring included because it actually surprised me how powerful this little thing is. So the, uh, the lever, there's not a lot of give in it, like not a lot of movement, but it doesn't have to be. So the projectile goes in there and it'll lock and you can sort of feel it on the thing. And if I shoot this, it's gonna, you know, it actually goes pretty quick. It's actually, uh, you know, I mean, it, it fires pretty hard for such a small spring and a little mechanism. I can sort of see why. Now I'm going to end up losing the projectile here, but I can really see why they didn't um, 
they didn't pat, repop this thing with a spring because it can uh, it can do some damage. So anyway, when I put uh, the, when I do the final assembly and everything, uh, forgive me, the the gun won't be painted up. But uh, yeah, but I just received the the spring, so that's why that's the case. All right, so moving on to the assembly. Most of this is going to be I've already pre-assembled some of it, but uh, most of it's going to be pretty straightforward. And I'll sort of point out some of the bits the. Uh, just the gloss I put in the uh, the green glass bit looked all right. So the uh, guns go on the small head. So there we have the head like that. I think it's a bit out of proportion. Um, I think these actually should be smaller on this uh, this head, but anyway, it is super deformed, so it kind of makes sense that uh, got the arms already pre-assembled. Okay, so now here's the uh, the torso assembly, and I'm going to put these wings on the back. That's the way to do it, which is different to the way the instructions say. But that's all right. That's the way it should work. Okay, so I got small wings there. I've got the legs. I had a little bit of a uh, issue with one of these feet. <laughs> this is really loose now, so I'm going to have to. Um, I'm not sure what I can actually do because I can't pull the pin out. So I might have to get a little bit of glue or something in there just to stiffen it up a little bit. Um, I have actually tested it. it; will still stand, but it's just a little bit loose. The other thing to note is that these side pieces here they actually come in really tight on this uh, top part of the leg. So it doesn't, um, you can see that sort of gap there, it doesn't, I, know, I think I probably need to sand it down or something, but it's actually rubbing on it, so not really um, thrilled about that. Uh, I should have picked that up when I was sort of cleaning it up. The other thing that I wasn't really thrilled about was the mess I made of this canopy. Now it sort of looks alright, you know, painted up, got the gloss on it, looks good. but. When I put it on here, it's actually a bit fiddly as to the way it sort of fits, and it doesn't fit as well it did, as it did um, after I melted it with the uh, <laughs> with the lacquer thinner. So I mean, it do, you know it looks looks fine from a meter away or three feet away, uh, which is the kind of modeler I am anyway. <clears throat> looks good from three feet away. All right, so now we can attach the uh, the wings. Here's another one that I had a little bit of a, a drama with. It's certainly nowhere near as good as if it, I'd had a uh, decal on it, but um, you know, it's sort of issues with masking and panel lines and what have you. Um, yeah, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't look too bad. Sure as hell looks better than just the bare plastic, that's for sure. Okay, now we've got the, the legs. So of course they fold back in fighter mode. got the small head and this was when I did the initial assembly of it I forgot to uh, forgot to do this on the on the build that and the arms 
can't remember if there's a, a right way or a wrong way. I don't think it actually matters that much. And they fold it back. All right. Well, as far as the fighter mode goes, it doesn't look too bad. There we have it. A lot better than the, uh, the bare plastic, that's for sure. And then we do have the landing gear as well. Um, well actually, I'll show you what it looks like with the gun on it. So it comes with this uh, extra white piece that um, goes into the arms here. Right way, there we go. And then the gun sort of holds in the bottom like that. So you can either have you can either have it uh, with the gun mounted on the bottom and I don't know there's nothing to sort of mount it on a on a stand or anything so you'd have to probably make something up to uh, make that work. But of course you can't use the landing gear while the gun's deployed. So if I take that off and then what I would probably prefer to do is put the put the landing gear on. Yeah, I don't think I'll put them all the way, but that's sort of what it looks like with the landing gear. <laughs> uh, I love the, uh, the proportions of this thing. It's pretty mad, but it does sit on the sits on the desk all right. With the landing gear deployed, you can uh, do the, the switch back of the wings. That's pretty cool. All right, so that's the fighter mode. I'll take these landing gear out, and despite the the poor paint job that I did on this thing. I do really like the colors that I used. I really like that, uh, the off-white and that, um, you know, not so bright red. It's kind of a bit of a dull red. It's just, uh, yeah, it's perfect for this, uh, for this Valkyrie. All right, so let's see. Gear walk mode, we just put the down and this over the wings fold back out of the way so that way you can swing the arms around All right, and what do we do with we fold the wings over Fold that up, put the wings back out. Put the dodgy canopy back on. And there you have in go get walk boat. His legs so he stands better. Like, he's, like I said, he's got a bit of a gammy foot, so he's uh, not that uh, not that good on his feet, but it does look cool. It's definitely my favourite mode of the uh, the Valkyries, and of course, you know, you put his. Uh, Gun in oversized gun. And uh yeah. So that's the uh the gearwalk mode. 
and then we go to Batroid mode so for that we have the separate head the larger um, larger proportion head and again you know the gloss green came up pretty good I think and then I'm just sort of following the instructions here of so wings go back yeah, so that allows the uh, legs to come down all the way and this folds over all right here we go I think that's uh, that's pretty good okay so we get his buff head on that locks everything else sort of in place it's uh locks on the back of that little pig there and that looks uh <laughs> That looks cool. Uh, this one's got a different canopy piece, so this one fits a little bit better. Marginally. There we have the base sort of Batroid mode. And then of course the next bit is to get all of his armor on. So let's see what we're going to do. Okay. And do the same on the other side. Here we go. All right. Uh, let's see. It's going to scratch up the paint. That's how we go. They go like that. Uh, try to sort of splay his arms out a little bit. So then we've got his chest plate. Now this is one bit that's actually going to work the way it should. So that goes on there like that. These little shoulder pieces, I can remember which way they go. I think that's on the other shoulder. And then we have these pieces. Some of this blue is probably going to rub off on the uh, on the white paint, which will be annoying. I've got his little forearm armor. Just props up. Jeez, he gets bulky quick. It goes on there. Get his chest armor on. Lordy Lord, he is definitely armoured up. So he is quite the meaty little uh, little guy. He's a little bit back heavy, so I'm just going to tilt him forward a little bit. But uh, yeah, he's quite, <laughs> quite a bit in it. So uh, yes, yeah, quite the meaty little uh, Valkyrie. So that's it for this build. Um, haven't decided what I'm going to be building next, but I'm sure you'll find out soon enough. So uh, thanks for watching, and uh, I'll catch you at the next build. See you later.